Hello everyone, Argzy here. Welcome along to another map tour for a brand new map in Farming Simulator 22. We are on Shellbrook Creek, Saskatchewan. This is a four times map, so PC only. I'm sorry console players, it is just too big for what Giants will allow at the moment. And it is by Camille Mapping. Now, if you played FS19 on PC, you may be familiar with some of Camille's other work. Uh, maps such as the County of 40 Mile, Prairie, Saskatchewan, Peace River, British Columbia, to name just a few of uh, the maps he created for Farming Simulator 19. This is obviously his first foray into FS22 and I think the first Canadian based map in Farming Simulator 22. And as I said this is a four times map so let's take a look at the PDA, uh, get ourselves familiar with the lay of the land so to speak uh, before we go on a little bit of a tour around looking at some of the different farmyards and some of the different features. So as you can see it is a uh, very interesting looking map from the shape of the fields. Very few regular shaped fields, in fact field 4 up near the top there might be the closest to a uh, square field although it does have a big forested area there in the middle. So we are starting off, this is the main yard here, down here next to field 14 and 15. And if we just bring up the property map, you can see that we do start off with those two fields along with the yard. $385,000 for that. Now, if we have a look around, field number one is the largest by value, $745,000. 25 there, 522, four, almost $700,000, right down some smaller ones around the 100,000, 90,000 and a few like over here where they come as a package 26 and 27 together down the bottom there 37 and 38 together for $300,000. 38 numbered fields on the map as well so plenty of scope to grow. I hadn't actually noticed 24 down the bottom there just $10,000. But as I was saying this is the yard we start off at. Now it's kind of broken into two main parts I guess. We have a road that comes north to south here up into the main town of Shellbrook. Uh, that can be linked across. There is another road which heads down on the other side here between these fields over to uh, these features over here. There is a road through the bottom as well which links it up. And I do believe, it's a bit hard to see, but there is also a road through the middle. So we'll go have a look at some of those. I think we will uh, we'll head down from the main yard. We will head down south. Take a look at uh, this yard down here. Head across. We'll go and have a look at this here which is the main animal yard. Head back up north, animal dealer up here, and then we'll go take a look in the town uh, and have a look at what Camille has included up in that uh, before we wrap things up. So one of the interesting things here, Camille has not set the farm up with any equipment. However, he does go on to say in his introduction, you start the game owning the main farm and two fields. No machinery, but your grandpa has given you a valuable gift. If you sell it, you should be able to buy some equipment to start your career. Now I actually quite like the way Camille has set this up. Uh, obviously, as a lot of people do, and particularly on PC, there's easy ways to add money and do things like that, buy the equipment that you want. Camille's tackled it a slightly different way. I'm not going to ruin the surprise completely, but this is the piece of uh, equipment that Grandpa has left you. Nice old pick up there, you can see the number plate Camille 2022, left his mark on the map with that. Now you can go and sell that, get a little bit of money from it and uh, use that to set up your equipment, build your farm or you can obviously use the uh, cheats to add money in, the uh, government subsidies, all those different things that we can do through PC. But I do like the way he has done this, uh, it isn't a small amount of money. I tell you what, if you had a pick up that was what this is worth, you would... Uh, wouldn't be selling it very quickly, it'll be going into a shed and not being driven too much. But a uh, nice little touch there, I do like that. But we are here, as you can see in the background, we've got the uh, Northwest Mods and Edits Ford Super Duty, my new favourite truck. You can also make out the Argzy logo there on the side. But to start the tour here of the main farm, this is obviously the main farmhouse. Around the front where we were, I do believe was actually where the sleep trigger is. Let's go and poke our nose around there and see if you can see that. And there it is, I had the interactive markers turned off, but there is the sleep trigger. So that is uh, where you need to come to if you want to take a rest and sleep through the night. So we'll head out here, one thing you will notice, and I think this is a bit of a feature of some of Camille's farms, is uh, just how much equipment or how much space you do end up with it. So this is really big and open, it is well set up. Uh, Camille did say thank you to Elk Mountain Modding, Trailer Park Farms, Crook Creek Modding. 
uh, for the use of the mods. So those who are familiar with the uh, trailer park farm sheds will instantly recognize those uh, from their work. And as we're going around, you might be able to spot some of the other things. He did also acknowledge the uh, work that the Ford Ag team had put into testing this. So uh, well done to them and thank you for their help. Lots of storage space. This is uh, this is just a big, big, big shed. I think if we come over to the other side here, we've got a trigger here to open these doors. Love the animation on these doors. That's just a fantastic uh, way that it works there with the belts going up, folds out, and just a nice sound to go with it too. So plenty of space for storage. So we've got the other shed over there which has the uh, sliding doors. We'll take a look over here then at all the silos. Now these are the Meridian in-game silos. I think if we just walk up next to one we should be able to see. There we go, flat bottom bin 3608. It doesn't have anything in it. Got a good selection of these around here. Lots of space either side to set up the augers. So you could drive around one side or you could go around the other there. Obviously the uh, unload auger is on this side so if you are uh, taking crop out of that it would be on this side here there's even more space for that some uh, smaller hopper bottom bins over here as well so lots and lots of space to keep things in there we go silo is empty as well we'll just take a little bit more of a walk down here more silos down the end we've got a uh, liquid fertilizer storage tank over this side just see over there and have a quick look at that and uh, we can obviously buy our product here directly and Simulate getting that delivered, which uh, we talked about in the last map tour we did. Obviously part of something that Giants haven't integrated into the game, which I think is a fantastic feature. I haven't actually researched the flag, but I'm going to take a guess that it might be a Saskatchewan's flag. Might have to have a little bit of a look into the significance of the flag. Uh, if I've got it wrong, I'll be popping something up on the screen now to say, Argzy, you're an idiot and you got it wrong. But a uh, nice little touch there having a local flag. It's on the big shed. Another big drive through shed, a uh, bit of a workshop space over there, just uh, decoration though, I don't believe that there is any uh, interactive zones there, we can turn the lights on though, they will turn on anywhere. Just back over here at the farmhouse, I haven't seen this feature before, I don't know, and someone can correct me, I know you will, but if we go there, this brings up our character selection, so you can come and get changed for work every day, I think that's just a nice little addition if Camille's added that in, uh, if it is a standard feature by Giants then uh, well done to them as well. Like I've said a couple of times, I'm still getting my head around everything that is in FS22, all the changes that have come from 19, and uh, understanding exactly what was there, what's not, and what each and every little aspect of the uh, game includes. So still lots for me to learn. But that is pretty much the main farmyard here. Like I said, lots of open space. You can obviously build more sheds, you can put more silos up, but it is well set up for quite a large arable grain type farming operation but uh we'll jump in here into the super duty and we're going to go for our drive down the road and check things out on other parts of the map so just as we're driving out the small field here number 14 what i do like is the layout here there's actually another vehicle entrance you can make it out on the mini map on the other side of this field which lends itself quite well to setting this up with auto drive you can have an in you can have an out so uh, you're going to make sure that there's less li likelihood of any of your equipment having a clash or uh, any issues with running into each other when you're trying to uh, auto drive from some of these bigger fields because I think that would be quite a good solution to uh, handling this all on your own if you were to farm it all on your own. It's also very well set up I think for a multiplayer and it might be something we look at doing on the Argosy Gaming community is to set up a multiplayer server on the map, so uh, keep an eye out for that. So we're going to head out here to the right, head down to the south end of the map, uh, take a look at what is going on down here. Just as we do, you can just take a look across some of the fields. Nice and open, lots of space, so you can spend a decent amount of time when you are working in here. It's not just going to be a uh, quick little job to get any of the work done in here. Nice big margin here on the side of this field too. You could even increase the size of your land to plough it in. Now one thing I didn't mention is all the roads and the public area aren't actually purchasable. Um, not sure whether Camille may consider adding that in in future updates. I do know he is planning an update for a small little issue with one of the buildings rotated incorrectly which we'll, uh, we'll just take a look at and I will point out he's fixing. But all of this forested area in here is, uh, is not purchasable so if you did want to do any forestry probably not very well set up for this but just while we've been chatting there we are coming up here onto the second of the uh, 
arable farms. Uh, a little bit smaller setup in here, but let's just go take a look at it now. We'll start off over here at the farmhouse. This is uh, instantly recognisable as Elk Mountain Modding's work. Anyone who's played with any of their farms would, uh, or any of their buildings will recognise this straight away. So much detail in here. Sets it up very nicely for uh, some role play. Get up the top here into the bedroom and office space. And uh, we've got a little sleep trigger here as well. So that's nice. If you wanted to start on this farm, you don't have to go back down to the other farm to use a sleep trigger, which is uh, handy. But well set up. Very nice little, uh, not little, but uh, very nice ranch house. And the max matching shed here, matching garage to go with it. So uh, again, nicely detailed, nicely done. And uh, all part of the Elk Mountain Ranch Pack, which you can obviously download and get separately if you did want to use it on your own map. Now just as we're walking over here, we'll uh, go and take a look at the big machine shed and then we'll go and take a look at the silos. This is uh, actually quite a familiar shed. It is exactly the same one that uh, they used on Deer Creek at the main farm. So uh, instantly recognisable. Very pleased to see that it has a pressure spray next to it. Uh, I think you all know that is one of my requirements for a farmyard is to have somewhere to keep your equipment clean. But like I said, instantly recognisable this shed. We've seen it before. Uh, it looks very, very nice. Just going to have a look in here. We didn't take a look at this last time, but you do see that we've got the uh, office space in here. Nice big poster there of uh, what looks like a John Deere to me. Working late in the evening. And coming around the back, uh, just like we've seen before, we do have a workshop trigger here. So you can come over here and uh, take a look at any of your equipment that you might want to work on, customise, repair, repaint. Although I don't know why anyone would want to, anyone would want to repaint. Although I don't know why anyone would want to repaint their equipment in uh, FS22. It is not the cheapest thing. Alright, so heading out now back over this way, we're going to take a look at these uh, bins. We've got three bins here, the uh, smaller Meridian Hopper bottom bins, uh, all empty, would make a good storage for your uh, seed or fertiliser. And then we've got a silo complex over here as well. So we'll just have a quick look there, we've got the uh, unload pit there, so obviously suits having some Hopper bottom trailers. And uh, actually keep an eye out because Camille has released a... Uh, a hopper bottom trailer, the Load King triaxle, which uh, would actually be very well suited to running through that unload pit. And likewise, here we've got our loading out from the uh, overhead bin, so you can get your grain out to take it down to the sale point. But uh, another nicely put together grain silo. Uh, I don't think it has any drying function in it, I think this is all just uh, decorative at the moment. But we are seeing obviously some drawing is being done on other maps so there could be an opportunity to get that running here if you wanted to do some corn and get that dried. Over here we've just got another one of the liquid tanks that you could use for your uh, herbicide or liquid fertilizer. Got a diesel tank over there which uh, we're familiar with as well and then a couple more of the meridian bins. So uh, again could use those for some of your seed or fertilizer. Maybe those ones over there you might use for something else. Plenty of space around this yard. Actually, if we just take a look in the mini map, I was just having a look there when you buy this, you do get field 22 with this yard. So if you want to start out a little bit smaller, maybe pick up some of the fields around it, 23 or 19, uh, could be another option. But there is a little bit of grass area around about that you could use, cut down some trees if you wanted to put a second shed up, uh, make use some of the space around to grow your yard as your farm grows. So that is the second of the two... Uh, arable farms or the setup farmyards so let's jump back in the pickup and we'll head across the bottom of the map over towards the uh, dairy farm we're just heading south along the same road that we were on before these are the small fields in here on the right uh, that very small field right in there behind the trees we're just going to hang a left onto this gravel road and head across the bottom of the map this will take us over onto the other north south road on the right hand side of the map and uh, you'll just again get to see the, some of the size of these fields this one in here with the corner is looking uh, especially large and in fact if we just have a look at what that one is field 25 there uh, $520,000 so still not quite the biggest but quite a large field what I do like the most is the organic shapes the nature of this uh, area and it is all based off a DEM I should have mentioned that and a realistic location so all of the fields are true to life which is nice to see We'll carry on along here. Uh, the other thing I was going to mention while we're driving is this has been adjusted for the seasonal growth cycle for all your crops. 
So if we bring up the menu uh, while we put this on cruise control, hopefully we don't crash. If we just take a look at the crop calendar, you can see all our crops planting in April and May, obviously springtime in Canada and harvesting through August, September before that uh, intense cold that Saskatchewan is known for comes into effect. So uh, you do have a very narrow window to get everything harvested, planted, or obviously in the opposite direction, very narrow window to get everything planted and then harvested. So uh, if you were running too many fields, you might need quite a bit of an equipment and to be running it all at the same time, or be running on some uh, larger uh, days per month. All right, so we're just coming in here. We're gonna turn left as the road carries on around naturally, and we are now heading back north along the right-hand side of the map. So you can see in the distance there, just coming up on the dairy farm. So we'll go and take a look at that. We're just pulling in here to the dairy farm. You'll notice uh, what I mentioned earlier, the house there is around the wrong way. The garage is actually should be coming in this side. So that is something Camille is uh, already flagged that he will be fixing. So keep an eye out for that and an update coming very soon. But let's just go and take a look here. This is a uh, nicely set up dairy farm. So we'll jump out here and go and take a look at some of the buildings around the dairy farm. Now the first one up here on the right you'll recognise as the uh, workshop shed from Elm Creek. Got a couple of the pits there in the centre. Uh, no workshop trigger or anything in this one. Just the uh, space for storage and obviously some of the, uh, some of the decoration in that that, that shed comes with. Nice to see another pressure washer here. Camille must know me very well. For the animals you can see the cows over there in the distance moving around in the field, so that one stood up. We've got a water trigger here, so you can come and refill for your water for the cows, and we've got the fuel station there, the uh, diesel tank. Now, we'll have a look here. This is a JMF's tie stall barn. Now, that you might recognise this. This is a placeable you can get in place on your own maps if you would like. It has uh, opening doors here. I'm open. Walk through the middle. We've got the uh, cows and everything there. There's a trigger point here. I think this is for the TMR mixes. So built into part of the uh, part of the shed, we'll just come through here, here's our milk vats, so I think the milk pickup spot is just on the outside of the store. Wait for that to open up, get through there, there you go, that is the milk pickup for the silos. And uh, here is all the production point for the uh, TMR, so you can put your product in there and uh, get TMR out the back, got the loft up there for the hay so you can put your elevator and everything up there. Buy point for the cows and another door so you can get into the other end. So nice little, uh, well not nice, it's not little, it's quite a large barn but good looking at barn there. Got, this looks like it would be our slurry fill point pumping out of there and I would expect this is probably manure on the end. And then if we come over here and take a look at the cows, you do see we've got uh, moving cow models which is it's nice to see. One's a little bit jittery. You frame road issues there with those cows, but uh, good to see them moving around in there. We'll head over this side. I've got another, uh, looks to be a trailer park farm shed here again. Silage clamp down the side, the uh, base game drive through ones. And hold a decent amount though. And if we just have a look in here, obviously a big long shed with lots of space for storage. And uh, again, we've got the liquid fertilizer silos there and some more silos here you could use for, I guess you could put some TMR, you could put anything in there, you could put some of your raw materials in there, uh, lots of different options. And only a couple of uh, grain silos, just again the flat bottom bins, the Meridian in-game ones. There if you were to do some, uh, do some cropping or anything like that as part of this farm as well. So you could set up down here and I guess cover both bases, run dairy and run arable land. So nice uh, nice little setup. Same as every other farm, there's plenty of space around it. And, and just taking a look here in the mini map, down the bottom here you do get field 35 which is quite a sizable field, $360,000. But it is this whole square, just zoom in there, uh, is this whole square so lots of space. And let's just go and have a look at the back uh, where the pasture and everything carries on. Lots of space out there if you wanted to expand if the gates open, they do. So uh, you can get out there and do whatever you would like. Got some trees down in here, expand the field out or whatever. So good uh, good setup in here and nice looking dairy farm. Could be a lot of fun to operate this. Right, we'll go jump back in the pickup and carry on heading up the road back up towards the town. 
You can just see the starting of a waterway here on our left, and we're actually going to take this road, which heads back across the middle of the map. Now, if we carried on straight up there, we would head all the way to the top of the map. You can see we are here at the moment. That road goes all the way up to the top. Uh, but we're going to head across here, across the middle of the map. Uh, it gives us a chance to pick up this little, uh, I think there's a cell point there. Uh, also some silos and things. We can take a look at that before we head up and finish up in the town. We'll just get a chance here to look a little bit closer at the lake uh, as we're dropping past it. So quite a big open pond, uh, lots of space around it. Again, if you wanted to introduce some role play or something like that, it could be a bit of fun to do something there with that. I do like looking on the other side there. It's like some of the trees are in under the water as well, which is kind of nice. Got a nice little touch that uh, the water's encroached there on some of that land. We'll just carry on up here. You can see our next destination just peeking through the trees there. So we'll uh, go over and take a look at what we've got set up over there. We're just reaching the end of this road. Now the road here in front of us is the original north-south road. If we took a left down there we would end up back down at the main farmyard where we started out. We'll just take a look here. On our left you can see we've got a uh, house, a barn and a uh, shed there with the windmill as well. I don't think that's purchasable. We will take a quick look once we get in here. I'm just going to turn in here. Ravenwood Farm. I if that's a sign that that's been borrowed from somewhere else. But it looks like we've got a, might be a workshop over here. We'll just take a look around what everything is here. Forge workshops. We do have a workshop trigger there. We'll head on over here and take a look at the silo complex. We've got a unload point there underneath the uh, overhead bin. So tip there. Now I do believe this is a cell point. Just zoomed in there far enough. This is a GCHB grain elevator. Now I know that both this elevator and the one in the main town have the same name. So there you go. We just try and tag this one. We'll see if we're at the right one at the moment. And there, yeah, no, this one in town. So we are at the uh, other one, which must be the top one. And indeed it is there. This is the uh, big green indicator to the sky. So you can bring your crops down here and get them sold. Also over here we've got a couple of uh, silos and I think you can probably use these to buy products. So there we go, you can uh, select the product you want to buy, solid fertilizer, put it into the silos and then load it into your trailer and this one here has seeds. So I guess you could use these as resupply silos, uh, a bit of a co-op type setup just here. And then over the other side here we've got another shed. See if we can get into that. Possibly need the trigger from the inside. Just run around this side. Have a look. There is a workshop there. Doesn't seem to be a trigger on that door, but you can have a look. In there, I recognise this shed from uh, Medicine Creek. My playthrough I've just just about completed on that. But you can have a look in there. I guess this is uh, simulating a little bit of a co-op and set up there. See the uh, another Ford there set up. It's nice. And just having a look here on the property map we can click on the fields around but this is a part of that is center land which you can't actually purchase so uh not something you can own unfortunately and is just a static shed with no animations by the looks of things so we're going to jump back into the pickup and keep heading up the road so we're carrying on north along the main road from the starting farm you can see uh lots more open fields here i do like this drainage ditch on the left is a uh, nice wooden platform bridge to get into it as well which might be a little bit trickier to access than some of the other fields but a uh, nice little touch there. Now we'll just keep on heading up here we are approaching very quickly the town of Shellbrook so we'll pop up there and uh, take a look at everything that Camille has got set up for us. So we've just paused here for a second you can see we're coming in the road here uh, we're sort of in suburbia at the moment you can see we've got the uh, main shop over here on the left there is the biogas plant and then you can see scattered through here is a number of different production points. Uh, we won't go and take a look at all of them, but I will just slowly drive through town and point some of them out as we go. But there is already in here a the dairy, carpentry, bakery, grape, oil, cereal, grain mill production chains included. Uh, you don't need to buy them either, which I find interesting. It appears that Camille has got those already set up where you can take product to them and already get them running. So just take a right and hang down this road and uh, just have a look a lot of them are here on the left so we'll just take a look at those now that's actually something I need to point out the map is anhydrous ammonia ready so he has added that in as a fill type so you can see we've got that in there I'm assuming that is probably the buy point 
or the anhydrous. And in fact, if we just swing in here and take a quick look, there you go, there is the trigger. Looks like we've also got a lime fill point over the other side here. Uh, possibly another water, or maybe even something other than water there. What is that symbol? It's like liquid fertilizer from those points and uh, a whole lot of other silos and tanks and things that are all scattered around. Now I recognise this building from Farming Simulator 19. I believe if we drive through here you can get bulk fertiliser out of the uh, auger. And there you go. should be able to drive in underneath that and get your fertiliser supplies. We'll carry on back along the road here. Now you'll recognise the uh, baseball stadium there, Redford Park. Uh, he does have the custom sign there for the Shellbrook Knights, which I'm assuming must be one of the local teams. And just carrying along here, you can see we've got the grain mill there. There's another one of the production points over the other side behind it. Uh, looks like the dairy up here on the left for your milk. We've got another point up here. I'm not sure whether this is a sell point or a, or a production point. Shelbrook Parkland, uh, but there you go. There is a number of these all scattered through here, so lots of opportunities to introduce that, uh, introduce the production chains to your playthrough on this map, which is uh, which is good to see. You got the Pioneer uh, Pioneer Seed Company. Now, I can't remember River Bottom Custom Farming who are responsible for that. You can see that there that Camille has also placed into the map. So there we go, that is a Shelbrook Creek in Saskatchewan, a four times map by Camille Mapping. Out now for PC only, obviously, being a four times map. But uh, available from his Facebook page to download. You'll also find the links to it in the description below, as well as in the FS22 map directory you'll find on my website, argzygaming.com. Uh, fantastic looking map, and I'm really looking forward to getting this set up on a multiplayer server. Uh, I think it's going to be fantastic to have a couple of farms running, you could run them separately or together, um, but equally so to play on a single player, having some of those features like anhydrous, uh, I know the guys from Ford Agriculture are hard at work getting their anhydrous equipment set up and available for public release, so keep an eye out for that in the uh, coming weeks, which will just give you more options to be able to play with anhydrous on this map and all those other ones that have got it already added in there uh, great to see it coming through to fs22 so early so kudos to the guys that have figured that out and uh, for the mappers sharing that information and using it on a number of different maps so i do hope you have enjoyed that tour of shellbrook thank you all very much for watching and i will catch you in the next one